time is six o'clock. It's where this is the regular meeting of the City Council of the City of Trinidad, Colorado on March 7th, Tuesday, 2023. <laughs> Here. 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 Just for the general uh, knowledge of the of everyone here, the mayor is in Washington, D.C. at a conference, and then the mayor pro tem, so I'm acting in his stead. Item two, approval of the agenda. Are there any changes that anyone would like to make to the agenda? We have a request from the mayor that we postpone the executive session until he's back two executive sessions that are on the agenda until he's back in town. Would anyone like to make a motion? I move that we delete uh, the two, uh, delay the two executive sessions, item number 11A and item 11B, until the full council is present. I have a second? Second. All the vote? Ivana? Yes. Griego? Yes. Ogletree? Yes. Shu? Yes. Okay, policy items and staff reports. Uh, nothing to say. We have oh, on the agenda. Oh, I apologize. We do have one item. <laughs> That's right. Michael's presentation yeah. is now. So, a uh, housing uh, now initiative program update for Michael Yearman. You almost got off the hook. <laughs> well, I did provide a staff report um, with an update. Uh, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. I know everyone's been asking where certain projects are at. Um, if you want me to like, go through each one or um, get specific questions, can we make a good brief one? I, I like if you would give us the highlights because you've seen that, but the, the public doesn't know what's going That's on. The, yeah, that'd be great. Um, so, so far today, uh, we have received uh, 11 projects for a total of 115 potential units. Uh, 62 of those units will be funded from the, the, the incentive funds, which would have the deed restriction for permanent residency or long-term rental. Um, at this time, of the $2 million that was set aside, there's uh, 450000 roughly remaining. And when I say roughly, the reason for the rough count is tap fees. Um, we don't know exactly, but we are budgeting in that amount for tap fees. Um, so, Unfortunately, we did have the one project uh, drop out for the one unit, um, but we also have seen interest tonight um, from Trinidad State Junior College for two units that you'll be considering later, and also we have had a uh, potential application coming in from 613 Arizona Street, which I believe is eight vacant apartments um, in the core. So we haven't done, Wally and I have not done the site visit, but um, it's just a matter of the property owner getting to town. When, I, when I'm here and while I'm here. Uh, so obviously we have surpassed our 100 unit goal. Um, what I will say is I, I think with development, there's always like, we're gonna see it go faster and faster. I, in, in doing these kind of projects across the state, it's normally three years. It's normally three years because there's a year of getting the entitlements, construction financing, everything, and then a few years of, of actually building this stuff. So, um, <clears throat> but we have seen some progress. Um, so the new Trinidad apartments, uh, those are the ones um, above the, I forget the new restaurant name that moved in there. It's horrible, right? Almax? Oh, yes, yeah. Almax, thank you. Um, they are continuing to proceed. They did run into an issue because it's uh, of floodplain insurance requirements. So uh, they are dealing with that. The depot lots uh, submitted for the Dulles Transformational Affordable Housing Grant. I know this, uh, the state has reviewed their application because they're in the first round. Um, whether or not they got the award is yet to be seen, so they, the state hasn't made any announcements. Uh, Arizona Live Work Lots has been actively working with the staff. Uh, they did have an issue with slopes in the parking in ADA, uh, so they're trying to work with the city on getting the correct uh, 
Uh, and that's really what's controlling up the permit is for the building permit. Uh, Timberview Apartments is under construction. The East Street School is uh, currently uh, going after TCO right now, so they should be the first project to actually get a check from the city. Um, State Street Rental Properties. Uh, the owners uh, basically have stated that they've gotten through remediation and they need uh, trying to get find time to get their, their crews to those two sites uh, with all the other projects they have. Uh, so, but they are very much still interested. <coughs> Eagles Hall. Um, they hit a quite uh, hit a snag uh, when they first started with their application with the state historic fund. Uh, originally, the state was saying that they didn't want to see eight units or nine units upstairs. Um, but they have since worked that out, and they are proceeding now. Uh, so that, that is a good resolution, um, because three units, I think, would have made the project economically not feasible for them. Um, so they are proceeding, and we expect them to go through the city's uh, land use application process here soon. Uh, 234 uh, North Commercial Off. Um, this uh, has gotten, uh, this is um, the picture store. Uh, this has gotten through uh, initial design work. Uh, the architect has been hired, and I even believe he's even uh, working with the DC right now to get construction costs. So he is actively pursuing. <coughs> Holy Trinity did get, I did confirm, they did also get their application submitted for the DOLA Transformational Affordable Housing Grant. Um, I believe they're asking for $10 million from DOLA, so that's a big, big reward if they were able to do that and leverage the town's, uh, the city's funds. The Lakes Department, unfortunately, was the only project that I was not able to get an update for for the council uh, for this meeting. And I didn't run into Wally today, so I, I know he was actively asking. So I apologize, I don't have an update on that. And then tonight, uh, 920 and 926 now <coughs> is Trinidad State Junior College, and I'll be here to present that here in just shortly. So happy to answer any questions. Let's see if the council has any questions, Mr. I do it right now. Pretty, pretty good. You yeah. said a TCO, is that a certificate of occupancy? As temporary certificate of occupancy. So normally, um, well, I know that the East Street School is looking at trying to get the first floor units have been fully completed. And normally, you grant a TCO if all life safety issues have been addressed. Um, so I know there's some discussion going on with the fire and the building department to make sure that those issues, that, so that the building can be safely occupied. Um, while the other, other units upstairs are getting the finishing touches. Okay. I can work with that. Can be a now, the um, 7th Street, the uh, Timberview, I go by that every day. Man, they're rocking on that. You know, that direction, I, they're going fast. That's a great example of that project was dead. Uh, he had walked away from it. Uh, it was going to probably put the land back up for sale. And the city's incentive is what made him come back yeah. and kind of cross the finish line with his financing. That's great. So I, I he had a, he's, he's actually getting a chapel on from that project. So that's a really great example of the city coming to the table and chapel seeing that additional contribution by the city, especially with the path fees as well. Uh, that really made it made a pencil for him. And he locked in a good interest rate if you've not been paying attention. <laughs> Um, I don't have a question. So, uh, um, I can still remember back to the first meeting when we started this, and there were, there were so many questions in my mind, and uh, a lot of stuff uh, has tra transpired along the way. But this is this is just so encouraging to hear the update of each, and then, like you mentioned, um, and Council and Greg were talking about the speed of that project. It's just it is really encouraging to see, and just a good example of what, what can happen. Appreciate it. I applaud the council for you know going after this because this is a the, the issue that I was talking with a with a different gentleman last night when I came to town was just asking what I was doing. There isn't there normally isn't typically funding for private individuals to do these types of projects, and you guys listened to the, the gap that was needed, and this is the results. So thank you. Am I correct in? reading your report that there's about 450000 that's left in what we've allocated that we can put towards a housing incentive. Correct. Right. Okay. I didn't have any more questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thanks. Petitions or communications oral or written?
have uh, Mr. Jay Gillespie. Hello, Council, uh, staff members. Good evening. Um, I just wanted to say through Jared Chatterley recently and the Office of Outdoor Recreation, I did a hiking and walking guide for the city, and I wasn't sure that everyone had seen it, and to be honest, I'm really proud of it. It took me a <laughs> bunch of work and a bunch of time, and I spent a lot of uh, effort on it, so I just wanted to give you all a copy, if that was okay with you all. Yes, thank you. So I'm going to do that real quick. Thank you. That's no problem. I see from that time you've done the water. <laughs> 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 well, to be honest, me and my wife, you're very welcome. We walked every trail in this sky, every city trail in the sky, not the state parks, just three days ago. We clocked in at 16 miles, 1,200 feet elevation from our house. It was so much fun. We have so many awesome things here. And I was so proud to get to show them off for the city. So I'm excited for this summer, for the tourists and the people that visit to get to see our wonderful trails. So thank you all so much and have a great rest thank of you. Thank you. Thanks to be available. They're at the and Welcome Center. I yeah, they'll be there for, I mean, mm -hmm. that'll be the only area, I mean, just the Welcome Center. I'm also, um, we've distributed them along the front range a little bit as yeah, per the contract, but a lot of them are gonna be on Main Street at the businesses there to make sure that we hit all of the visitors this summer. Yeah. Fantastic. Great. Awesome. And also, uh, there's a couple more Sorry. ideas that Jared has for a few more of these. So if you like them, um, let's do a driving guide and maybe a historic building guide. And let's just make sure everybody knows how great this town is. All right. Thank you so much for your time. Thank, thank, you. thank you, Jay. The next um, people on the agenda are Marsha and Catherine Hook. If they both come up, do they just get five minutes together? Yes. Okay. Uh, that Okay, Marcia and Catherine Hook. Did you want to go Yeah. We just came, we want to urge construction of the depot because we've been coming here since Riordo was mayor. He said the city had the money. So where's the depot? <laughs> Where is it? I mean, what's, what's causing construction? The Amish people use that all the time and they put their babies on the platform. It's sick me, there's not even a bench for them. I see people take their dogs up there and the dogs pee on the platform. It's unhygienic. And it's really an embarrassment to the, the town because we have two festivals now organized. I'm with the uh, theater and we have that Spaghetti Western Comedy Festival. And I think a bicycle festival we organize with the train. People get off here, there are no facilities. There's, not, there's no restroom, no bed. There's not even a bench. I mean, if a temporary a bench could be put there. There are two There's benches no around the Veterans Memorial by Geneva Park, and I never see a person sitting there. So I wonder why there's not a bench. Can anyone answer that? Generally, we don't respond from the guys about okay. questions, but we can mm -hmm. refer you to our city manager. Okay. City manager. Can the city manager respond? Yeah, I, I what happened to the money that Mayor Riorda told us was available? And I'm not sure what money he was talking about. But currently, Amtrak is building and has design plans that they're working on for a warming shelter, which will include restrooms and an indoor space for people to be able to, to go. Um, the part of the problem is that the platform is is owned by Amtrak, so it's really their responsibility to provide that uh, amenity for passengers. Uh, but there are some things that are in the work right now um, that I think are really going to help. Like I said, that warming shelter should be coming along. I think construction is supposed to start in a few months, so there will be something there. And then uh, City Council has been having discussions about uh, transportation center in general, and so we're moving forward with those ideas. That's well. another thing, idea that's been floating forever, is the central transportation hub, with the sure. trolley, the bicycles, sure. the COG bus, the, the Amtrak train, it was also, but it's never come to. And there's a lot of parking here, are your little body guy? Yeah, why was all that parking built there? And nobody, I mean, some people put their RVs there, yeah, and I'm, not, I'm not sure the history on that. I apologize. But well, I've we been here, I've lived in Trinidad 27 years. Mm -hmm. And about 20 years ago, they tore down the road station. Mm -hmm. There was a, a station, a depot, and they built the highway, and they said they were going to build uh, a new depot. Mm -hmm. It's been 20 years. Yeah. And there's no depot, 
And people that come down from Pueblo, I talked to an elderly couple who was originally from here. I don't know what their name was. But they couldn't believe that there wasn't some sort of shelter, sure. at yeah. least. If you would, um, yeah. It's a shame. We address the, the, the Camara Council. Okay. Um, yes, and uh, well, so who should we uh, go to? To, to I, I know. I wonder how much Amtrak had in planning this, and I don't know what the shared responsibility is between the city and Amtrak. And if, if you want to call the city manager's office, I'd be happy to sit down with you. We can have some other staff involved and answer your questions. Okay. Well, right. along with the visitor center, the welcome which center. is the uh, <laughs> welcome center, <laughs> Man, if you can right. Uh, they ought to uh, consider a uh, depot for the train passengers. Yeah, it would be nice to coordinate the welcome, like they have in, I don't know if you've ever been to Dodge City, but they have a really nice Amtrak station with the welcome center inside of a whole historic building, as you know. Um, I, I know, we will uh, ride the uh, train quite often, and every town, no matter how small they are, have a depot. Trinidad does not, and I think it's a shame and an embarrassment. Thank you so much. Sure we should go into that. Uh, thinking about the visitor center or the welcome center. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Joni Steiner, Thank you. Joni Steiner. Thank you, um, City Council members. Thank you for um, hearing us. Um, I'm representing Earth Mountain Education Farm. I'm the director of Earth Mountain Education Farm, which we are an outdoor education center out of West End. We've been here 21 years, um, for, for anyone who hasn't heard of us. We manage the community garden. We do a lot of the organic farming, and it's all on a community basis. We have three acres in Jansen that we've been farming for the last 10 years. So um, we, uh, you'll see that Cedar Street Play Gardens. So there is a downtown vacant lot, and I'm just here to announce and, and to fill you in on some of the, the, this new project to our city um, that Earth Mountain is working with the community on. So it is in the Corazon. So it is in the downtown area. It's on Cedar Street right next to the Advanced Climate Solutions building. So it's a fence lot. It is privately owned and will be in lease of that lot. Um, the people who do own it have seen green space there for a long time. It could have been sold. So um, we partnered with the, with the landowners and we talked and now we're developing the lease on that property to create the Cedar Street Play Gardens. Okay, and there is a lot of play gardens. If you look at play gardens, there is a lot of neat um, play gardens, farm parks, things like that happening in the cities. This would be an urban agricultural project. We're bringing a farm to the downtown area, um, but an interactive e educational experience for tourists that are coming. Um, it's just one more added feature to the gardens of our town, which is about the fifth garden that we have. And, um, and it will be a managed space that will be open and closed at night. It is fenced at this point. So it will be managed, so we're actively farming it and we manage with farm managers down there. So we are getting public comment right now. We posted two meetings. People are very excited. They are giving their input. We have one more meeting. I invite you to come on Thursday at the Commons at 5.30 for community input. And um, so it's pretty basic. There's a lot of work to be done there. All the infrastructure and utilities need to be brought in with our um, an electric meter, water meter, um, and some of that work. Um, we would love to see that the city would partner with us on this on this project. Um, it's the next 10 years, right? <laughs> and, um, and, and people are really excited because it's an interactive play space that's accessible to everyone, handicap accessible. And what's kind of happening is, you know, the, the, the special needs group is really excited about kind of being a part of building their special needs garden. Um, the farm managers that I have are educators. So they have been working in uh, Fort Collins and in different areas in Boulder um, for different outdoor schools. This is another outdoor 
um, experience for people who are coming into our town. Um, a lot of natural playground kind of atmosphere, so almost bringing the forest into the town uh, where the kids will have their own little garden spaces and things like that. So um, I would just like to announce this project to you. I welcome you to the community meeting. We'd love to see your support in this. Um, we've had other partnerships before in the way that we are on the city lot at the community garden. We have a revitalization there. And I also employ our teenagers if you're not aware, with an internship program that pays them to work on these farms. Um, they're doing really viable, amazing work feeding our community. So they work for eight weeks, and they uh, it's a stipend-based program that's all grant-funded. We are a nonprofit, and we're funding this all through nonprofit grant funding and, and donations. So any any aligning funds that you guys might you know see that works and that we can work together on, I think this is another added amazing experience for tourism um, coming in because people are familiar with these type of spaces um, and they're also um, uh, for our community to have that safe environment that is very uh, interactive educational you can almost call it botanical but I don't think it's trained as botanical gardens <laughs> you know, so <laughs> I don't think we would you know fully satisfied but everything would be labeled all edible landscaping you know, highlighting xeroscaping, highlighting sensory gardens, highlighting pollinator gardens, uh, a lot of different areas in this. Um, just give so many, so many thanks to the landowners who do have held this space for something special for the community. Um, they are community members that many people know. One of them, who is here right now. <laughs> so, um, and so that they, they really um, are, are really excited about this, and I think the, the community is getting pretty excited about it, too. So thank you for, for listening. Any questions? We typically don't ask questions, but okay. thank you so much for letting us know. Thank you. Thank you. What time is it, Jeremy? 5.30. Where's the commons? It's on Main Street at 218. Next, Claudia Henning from the Chamber of Commerce. Good evening, Henry. I have some handouts for everyone. handouts are declaring that we have a Santa Fe Trail Day event that's going to be June 9th and June 10th this summer. Uh, before you know it, it's around the corner. Uh, we are looking for vendors, food and non-food. We're going all the way up to Pueblo to look for new truck, uh, uh, food trucks. So it will be exciting. I think you know, it's going to be much different. It's going to be very robust from last year. And it is going to be located in downtown Trinidad. We are looking for sponsorship opportunities, and that is part of the packet that I gave you. Putting on an event like this is expensive, and so we're looking for uh, some help in supporting the event. And we have all the way from rancher packages down to Broncos, so it'll be very much fun. And part of all of these packages it is vendor space and spot in our parade, what we plan on having on Saturday morning. So it, there's a preliminary discussion in your brochure about what's going to be happening on those two days, and we have a full of activities for the family, kid games, nighttime games. It'll be really fun. So we see a wanted poster. Uh, if you would like to pass it on, I would appreciate that because I want to get the word out. And finally, you have a coffee talk. Uh, as you may know, we already do coffee talks once a month on the first Wednesday of the month. And this coming coffee talk is going to be over at the county building. So I was there this morning inviting them, and I'd love to see all of you. Any questions? Give me a call. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> and that's Annie, sorry, Annie Rochelle. Good evening. Um, I just wanted to give you all an update. Last 
December, well, just last year, we ended the membership with 106. And in January, we had nine of our members renew, four new members, so that brought our count up to 114. And then as of last month, we had 10 members renew and two new members, so that brought us up to 123 members now. So we are building our members back up. Um, we also wanted to let you know that we did move um, our office. We're still in the Champions building, but we're in Suite 200. So we just have a bunch of exciting things going on, and we just wanted to give you all an update. We have the chamber coming. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Item 5, Consent Agenda Approval. Item 5A, Approval of the Regular Meeting Minutes of February 21st, 2023. 5B, Approval of the bid received by, from Blazer Electric Company in the amount of $118,956.99 for LED street light poles for First Street Project number 03-2023. C, approval of bills in the amount of $1,432,525. D, approval of payroll for February 18, 2023 through March 3rd, 2023 in the amount of $435,028.62. And I have a motion to adopt the agenda, consent agenda. So moved. Second? Second. Second. Call the vote. Tabano? Yes. Griego? Yes. Shu? Yes. Williamson? Yes. Hobo Tree. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes. Item 6A, public hearings. Can we do this now? I can't remember. Yes. Yeah. Item 6A, public hearing for consideration of an ordinance authorizing the master equipment lease purchase agreement dated March 1st, 2023 between the city as lessee and community leasing partners for the acquisition of a new Terrence Derrick Digger truck. This, who among the staff is going to present this? Cheryl? Yeah. Sandra? Do you open the hearing first? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the hearing's open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So this is the second reading and public hearing for the uh, lease purchase for the Derek Digger, Digger Derek truck. And the cost of the vehicle is $323,303.50. We will be using $50,000 uh, down payment from the marijuana fourth quarter allocation, which we hopefully will approve later. And the remainder will come from the Power and Light Fund. This is a five year term with a 4.92% interest rate, it's not as good as we received before. And the total amount of interest over the five years is $36,607. That's any questions. Just the yeah. We're in good financial shape where we could pay it off early. We would, we would do we that. We definitely too. would. We just have to see how uh, the, the electric rate yeah. um, increase impacts the budget. Um, I know they have a lot of other projects in, in the queue, so just depending on how that works out. But yes, we would absolutely pay it off okay. sooner. And there's no penalty to pay. Oh, there is not. Okay. Well, no questions since our discussion. And you mentioned that it went, it's now 4.92. Did it go up recently or is that? Uh, just no, the previous, uh, the wheel loader, I think we got at 2.18%. Okay. So it's literally half of what the interest we're paying now because okay. they're similarly priced. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does the public have any comment about this proposed lease purchase agreement? You are online. <coughs> Hearing none, hearings closed. Item 6-1, second reading of an ordinance authorizing the master lease purchase agreement dated March 1st, 2023 between the city as lessee and community leasing partners for the acquisition of a new Terrence Derek Digger truck. 
Can I have a motion to approve? So, so moved. Second. Any other discussion? Call the vote. Tibano? Yes. Priego? Yes. Shu? Yes. Williamson? Yes. Ogletree? Yes. <coughs> Item seven, unfinished business, we have none. Item eight, miscellaneous business. Item eight A, consideration of appointment of Keither Merchant and Barbara McKnight to the Urban Forestry Board. Are Mr. Merchant and Ms. McKnight here tonight? Yes. Can you come forward? Good evening. Good evening. I wanted to give both of you, we wanted to give both of you a chance to introduce yourself and to tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in being on the Urban Forest Report. Jim, no, age before. I am a native, almost native of Trinidad. Of course, when everything was dying, I left town. 35 years later, came back. My mother was failing. My husband brought me back to help her. I am a master gardener in Wyoming, and I will not bore you with all the trees I have planted over my lifetime. I want to help Trinidad. I can remember this place being beautiful with all the trees, and now, 50 years later, they are dying. And I don't want this to be a town where all you see is dead trees and pieces falling off, and so I want to help. Thank you, Mr. Okay. I like her. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did I say that out loud? Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Mr. Um, I was born and raised here. I uh, spent my entire life here, other than the three years I left to attend college at CSU Pueblo, where I got my bachelor's in wildlife and natural resource management. I'm very passionate about nature and wildlife. My house is full of plants and strange animals that creep and crawl. Mm. Uh, <laughs> And I am also a firm believer in if you want to improve the community, you have to be involved in the community. And so that's just something I'm looking to do here is bring a little bit of my passion and education to the table to try to make improvements. Thank you. Does Council have any questions? Thank you for stepping forward. Yeah. Appreciate you, Lizzie. No. I, so, I uh, definitely appreciate your guys' passion for that. I, I do have noticed uh, so many trees, especially it seems to me the evergreens around Trinidad are just starting to be in really poor health and dying. I mean, trees that have been presumably around for 30, 40 years easily are just dying. So, uh, well, my if, pet if now is, know, is, is on pine in that triangle that used to be beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And now, I don't know, but I'm going to find out <laughs> what to do about it. Okay. Well, we need to start uh, trying to figure a solution for our downtown trees. Just the FYI. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know that if they were in trouble. <coughs> Strong be... species. They're lived in the... Oh, the... Oh, yeah. the walls. Like everywhere else in town, all the yeah. animals do. Councilman, she has a question for uh, Oh, uh, We have this board here. Do we have uh, funding for them? Is mm -hmm. there anything that... Do you get funding from us or from uh, grants or... Oh, Do you mind if I answer? No, no go well, ahead. I, we had one meeting, we have, and we got a grant, and you have 1500 and we got the grant from somewhere for another 1500 and right now, I, Karen Wolf is our fearless leader, right. and she gave us the uh, assignment for this next month, and mine is where to put six trees, and it's fun. If I only have six trees, what kind and where? And that's where we are, but we have $3,000 right now. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Um, can I have a motion to appoint Keith or Merchant and Barbara McKnight to the Urban Forestry Board? So moved. Second? Second. Call the vote. Tibano? Yes. Priego? Yes. Shu? Yes. Williamson? Yes. Ogletree? Yes. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Item 8B, Trinidad State College Housing Now Incentive Agreement Consideration. And, uh, Mayor for Town and Council, Michael, I just wanted to point out before we start this item, we do have uh, Dr. Upper on Zoom. Okay. 
Uh, okay. As well. Thank you. Um, so the request is for uh, 920 and 926 Stonewall Avenue. It was a sewer line. I shut my computer down. Um, they are having an issue with a cross-connected sewer. And so the college came to the city to see if there was any assistance uh, to uh, assist with getting these houses completed and that expense. Um, this project technically does not qualify under the bank, well, it would qualify under the bank housing, but since it's not in the commercial district, it's not on the anti dilapidated ordinance, it technically wouldn't qualify. However, I think, as you know, the trades program is very much involved in trying to build uh, the trades in your community and it's been a great uh, program in getting uh, students ready to go into that field to produce housing. Uh, so we wanted to bring this project uh, to the council's consideration. Um, we did verify that the sales prices being, being offered are well below the 100% AMI mark, uh, which is great, especially with interest rates the way they are today. Uh, and they have agreed to place in the deed restriction on, their, on both of the properties in exchange for the funding. Um, so while it technically does not qualify, um, I think the council has the ability to allow it to qualify, um, and you are getting the deed restrictions in place. So with that, I will allow any discussion from that. Dr. Effort, do you have anything you'd like to share with us? Um, yes, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, good. Well, good evening, council members. Um, thank you very much for allowing me to join you to Day remotely. Again, I'm Rhonda Epper, president of Trinidad State College. I am um, joining you from our Alamosa campus, um, where I am this week. Otherwise, I would be there with you in person. But um, really uh, pleased to be able to present this proposal to you for the um, Housing Incentive Fund. We are um, working to try and address blighted housing and affordable housing in the community. And as you may know, we received the grant monies um, from the Attorney General's office in 2021, and we started working on these two houses on Stonewall, 920 and 926, in the spring of 2021. Um, we've been able to work with about 50 students um, putting about 50 students through the program thus far, and those are students that are out working for contractors in our community. And really the goal of the project was threefold. It was to address blighted housing in rural communities, to help build a workforce, to help with the shortage of workers faced by local contractors, and to actually put affordable housing um, back into the communities through the houses that we work on. So we have these two houses on Stonewall and then we purchased another house on First Street, I think 1024 East First Street. That will be our next project after these two. 926 is ready to go on the market. Um, we, were, we were ready to put it on the market when we found out that there was this sewer line issue. Uh, when we got the letter that's attached in the application package from Bob Just. And so we thought, um, we would do our due diligence and ask the city to partner with us to help address this um, fairly expensive issue with the sewer line and try and get the house um, ready to go on the market. We have put um, about $385,000 thus far out of the grant into these homes. And um, they are fantastic homes. They have um, new completely new mechanical and electrical systems, new plumbing, new HVAC. Um, they actually have air conditioning, brand new windows, new kitchens, uh, new bathrooms. So they're going to be an absolutely wonderful home for someone in our community. And having the deed restriction on them will ensure that it is affordable housing. And so that's, that's our request that um, that the city partner with us to get these houses ready to go on the market. Thank you, Dr. Everett. Does council have a question for either Mr. Nierman or Ms. Or Dr. Effort? Yeah, for Michael, I would like to. Sure. You, you were explaining that, that they're really not out. So do we have to change anything? To give them no, I, I think the council <coughs> has the discretion on the incentive funds. Um, <coughs> we, I, you know, they are, they're currently vacant housing, and I do agree with the 
fact that the college is, you know, is tackling flight. They're, they weren't cited under the ADO ordinance, so technically they're not. But again, I think under the incentive funds, the, the council has the, jurors, the, the discretion on how to award this funding. Um, and, I, and I think at the bottom line, really you have to remember that the incentive, that what you get back in return is a deed restriction in perpetuity, keeping these units as primary residents and as a, or a long-term rental for the occupants from your house. So, yeah, no, no, I mean, I, I think it's a good idea. I just wondered if we had to change anything that we, we might have to do that. And right. was the sewer problem an issue before they built that there? I mean, did something go wrong as, as far as- I think it's, it's a, it's a cross-connected sewer. Well, yeah, yeah, so it's two houses that are sharing one sewer connection, so they need to be separated. And it's just an antiquated, Thing that happened in our past, but it's crucial to the development of these properties. Yeah, I know we've had a couple houses like that yeah. before that on the same sort of. No, I, that was the only question I really had was that if we had to change anything to make it so we wouldn't have any problem by just going ahead and this would go on the housing. That, uh, yeah, this would count against this, so that. The, the 450 that I cited earlier, right. so that, that one, yeah. it, it actually, I, I'm count, you can see that I accounted for that in that table on my update. So this that's still leaves four by the chance. You went ahead of us, huh? No, I just wanted to give you an update on the current I'm careful about that. <laughs> it's a great project. Though. Mr. Yearman, stay up here. Okay, okay, sorry. Mr. Diego, do you have any help? No questions. So um, I do have a question, but potentially it's for Les. Les, is there any legal concern of uh, proceeding just under our discretion? Um, any concern at all? No, I, I have no concerns about this. I, I mean, what do you mean in terms of proceeding under your discretion? Well, I mean, in, unless I misunderstand, it's not within the exact <coughs> intent of uh, Right. So we would be proceeding with discretion. So is there any? I, I have no. I, I think it meets all the legal criteria. I, I think it's perfectly uh, appropriate for for this this program. Uh, I just like that note. Sure. Yeah. I'm on the hook. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And Mayor Prince County Council Les has reviewed the agreement that we'll sign with. Um, College as well, so he's been involved in the process. This week. I, I concur with Les. I don't see any um, concerns with yeah, our intent. I think, um, you know, like every other unit we proceed with, I mean, it's going to be a really good benefit yeah. to the community at large and um, be helpful in, in increasing our stock of affordable homes. So, and it, now they are bought another house he purchased on First Street. Would that come into our? So what I, we, what I will say is that every time we get an application, we actually go and we look and, and look, look at them and see if they're going to be eligible. The, you know, the big consideration for me recommending this is the purchase price. So I don't know any details about that, but we do want to see on these for sale units that the purchase price is affordable. And so I think we would have to talk to the college again, see what exactly what their plans are and do the review criteria. So I'm not prepared to speak on the new project. No, I, I was just curious because if they would apply ahead of time, then we could. Sure. You wouldn't have to come in. And yeah, no, I, I would, you know, it, it's up to the council um, on on that, on, on the next project. But we, I would want to do my due diligence and make sure that they understand that. Right. Because it's, it's not free money. There's an obligation to put a deed restriction and to have a purchase price. Thank you. Yes. And Dr. Ed, I just wanted to thank you and the staff at the college, Jerry Begley, all the students, very commendable. I mean, it's just amazing the transformation that has transpired in the last year. Thank you, Councilman. We are we're really proud of the work that the students have done, and we hope to continue it. And that's the idea. We're not going to make a lot of money on these houses, um, selling them at, at the price point we're selling them for. But whatever we do make will go back into the program to allow us to buy more houses so we can keep it going. I don't have any questions or concerns. So um, can I get a motion to uh, authorize the mayor on behalf of the city to enter into a workforce housing funding agreement appropriating 
$50,000 with the Trinidad State College and authorizing the city to execute the workforce housing deed restriction to be recorded upon project completion and incentive fund payment by the city. Second. Second. Tabano? Yes. Griego? Yes. Shu? Yes. Williamson? Yes. Oh, well, trees. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Item 8C, first reading of an ordinance revising the city's water rate schedule and the city's plant investment fees and setting a hearing for consideration of said ordinance at 6 p.m. on March 21, 2023. Um, can I have someone to introduce this? Probably introduce it. And who will be presenting this? Um, there, for example, we have Mark V. Hill, our director of water. Thank you. Calico. This is the yeah, first public hearing for a proposal to revise the rate structure for the water and sewer. Staff is currently working with Andrew Ring for the rest Talos Financial Consultants Incorporated on revising water and sewer rates for the city of Trinidad. The proposed water rate increase is projected to be approximately 50% of the base rate for residential and commercial customers with an effective date of April 1st, 2022-23. The proposed sewer rate increase is projected to be 40% of the base rate for residential and commercial customers with an effective date of April 1st, 2023 also. Um, council could elect not to accept the recommendations and not approve the water sewer rate change, which would diminish our current cash reserves and ultimately lead to a deficit in the water and sewer department budget. Um, the revision of the water and sewer rate structures are necessary. Both departments have seen increased costs in material, chemicals, labor, fuel, and equipment necessary to maintain, upgrade, and replace our infrastructures. The costs have also continued to rise to maintain and acquire additional water rights, which would be needed in order to support future growth in our community. As previously mentioned, our water rates have only increased $10.32 over the last 47 years. At that rate, it's going to be near impossible to upgrade our infrastructure, with, which is actually 80 to 100 years old. It's as old as the buildings and homes in this town. So, I'd like to introduce Mr. Andrew Ream, who has worked on our water rate study for the questions and answers. Thanks for the vote Thanks, Mark. Um, we, we've got a, a real brief uh, presentation that was in the packet, and certainly you know, we can walk through that um, and then uh, hear and answer any questions. Um, why don't you go ahead and address the water part of it? Because I know there's also a proposed sewer increase that you also did an analysis of, but if you could focus on the water in the beginning, that would be helpful. Sure. Donna? Or, I'm sorry, Donna. Donna, no, she's, she's controlling it. Mm -hmm. Donna. Yes, is it not up there? It, it's up, but could you uh, uh, go slideshow uh, on the middle on the top of it? And then uh, just, just start the slideshow. Oh, sure, slideshow. Well, let me find it. Move the curse to up. If you go up, if you find the help and go four over to the left. I help you. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't usually do this. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, not not <laughs> She's getting is help. It? Help is on the way. Got it. <laughs> so while that that's coming up, I just the. Uh, there's, there's a couple of components about water and sewer. Start with water. And as is indicated, uh, we've been working with the city, uh, completing a comprehensive uh, financial planning uh, rate and, and plant investment fee evaluation for the two uh, utilities. And you know, this is sort of an outcome of that process in terms of uh, user charge recommendations moving forward. Um, and just kind of a big picture. Ah, there it is. Okay. So that, that covers you know, essentially uh, this brief presentation. And um, uh, next slide, please. 
Um, as Mark indicated, they, we've, we've got a handful of drivers. Certainly, you know, cost increases on you know whether it's current operating costs, current facilities, um, and we're also looking forward in terms of anticipated uh, facilities, whether it's replacing you know, existing infrastructure and or expanding and, and being able to provide the service uh, to customers throughout the city and throughout the community uh, over time. So it's not just exactly looking backwards and kind of cost increases, it's also uh, some major facilities that have been identified over the uh, five to 10 year period. And uh, within that, the particularly on the water side, uh, through the marijuana excise tax revenue in the last you know few years, a uh, handful of years, the general fund's been helping support the utility, now that support is is declining. So that's another one that one of the drivers on top of the others that I had mentioned. Um, so that's, you know, in terms of big picture on the financial side, I'm going to start with, uh, next slide please, um, uh, one component of this, and, and certainly, you know, happy to answer questions. I'm going to uh, apply at a pretty high level. Um, this is the one-time fees that are assessed to new development. And uh, next slide please. Um, what we're proposing is uh, uh, adjusting these and, and increasing them uh, as laid out in the schedule. So just to, you know, highlight for those that are, are is familiar with uh, these fees, these are, this is for new or increased development uh, that comes in. So this is more of the one time and not something that all customers pay. Um, and it had been certainly some time since these have been adjusted. Uh, next slide, please. I have a quick question on that. Yep. I mean, no, it doesn't pertain to the sewer, but when on this, I'm sorry, the water, but on sewer, is the, the sewer fee directly related to the meter size fee? Is that how that's, that is how that works, right? Yeah, that's how it's proposed under the updated fee structure. Um, today, it's assessed based on the sewer uh, diameter and the pipeline. It's it's a little bit different, but uh, th this puts both based on the water meter okay. size, which is more commonly how these two are assessed. Okay. Sorry for the little comment. No, thank you. It, it, it's a good question. It was a, it, it's a change. Uh, next slide, please. And, and you know, the, these types of comparisons are difficult, but this really focuses in on uh, a new residential connection um, across, you know, representative communities and similar types of one-time one fees with water and sewer assessed, whether uh, with in the city of Pueblo, uh, through the other communities. As, as we can see, you know, certainly um, the proposed fee would be an increase for the city and, and the city within kind of, you know, these communities. Uh, it is somewhat in the middle of this group, but it, it would be a step and certainly, you know, increase uh, these types of fees and it's the same group. Um, you know, the city's fees would be a little bit higher than they are today, but uh, certainly not the bias within the group itself. Um, so now I'm going to move on to the more more of the um, rates and fees and, and those that uh, all customers in the system pay monthly. Um, and, and certainly the focus, I'm sorry, next slide please. Um, the, is the focus is, you know, on um, start with water and, and then certainly uh, cover sewer as well. So I, I just want to highlight a few things. The, the, the way that uh, water and sewer is assessed within the city is very similar how it's assessed to throughout um, the state and many communities where there's a, a fixed uh, component and then a volumetric component. Um, and, and so as we walk through the, the proposed as well as how it compares to the current, we'll, we'll kind of see those elements for both water and sewer. Um, another item that I want to highlight uh, is that we're proposing to change the billing units. So particularly on the volume side, the rates may not look familiar because they're uh, in, in a different billing unit. And today, the rates are assessed per 100 cubic feet. Um, and we're proposing that we, we switch to per thousand gallons. And it's just one of, you know, somebody who works in this industry, I mean, it's about 750 gallons per uh, 100 cubic feet. Like, I know that conversion just because I have to do it. But uh, it, it, it's, it's even then, it, you kind of have to think through it. And uh, the meters themselves are in gallons, and that's how they're read. So th that's just independent of the, the change in terms of increase. I just wanted to, to state that in terms of the volumetric side, because uh, the numbers may look a little bit different than what, what the current rates show. So with that as a backdrop, 
I uh, want to start with water where uh, this is a pretty straightforward where today you know, we have fees assessed by meter size and we're proposing uh, to increase those fees. Um, and uh, with that, there's a minimum allowance that's, that's as part of that uh, fixed charge. We're proposing to, to modify that uh, for okay. residential customers. And, and uh, next slide, please. And this is where the, the, there's a little bit more of the differences on, on the volume side where today with that minimum, the first 7,500 gallons are included in the base rate, and then there's a volumetric rate that gets assessed for use that's above that uh, for the majority of customers. Um, under the proposed, we're, we're modifying a couple different ways, and certainly modifying how that minimum functions and, and reducing that uh, under the proposed rates, and then uh, implementing for residential customers uh, tiered rates, if you will, <coughs> Uh, that um, is you use more of the, the rate per thousand gallon increases. And then for other customers, we're proposing just a, a, a uniform rate in, in terms of the more you use, that increases the rate that you charge, but it doesn't quite step up uh, the same way that uh, we're proposing for residential customers. Um, and, and, and I'm happy to answer questions you know, regarding that. I just wanted to highlight and point that out. Uh, in terms of the impact, and this is just sort of the water portion for a, a residential customer, with this structure change and, and you know the, the couple changes on the you know, both on the fixed as well as the volume side, it, it's gonna the the impact is gonna vary depending on how much you use. So on the next slide, we, we've compared. Excuse me before you go to yeah, the next. Sure. On the, the bottom right of that screen where it says non-residential water station golf, which is, is that for our golf course? Correct. Okay. Okay. But we, we don't charge for that water, correct? Currently we're not charging. Um, the suggestion from the consultant is that we begin charging for that water. Okay. So that's still something even putting the rate in still is something the council can discuss going further, going forward going in the future. Okay, that makes sense. And I think you were just coming to explain how this affects the typical residential user, how this, this would affect them. Yeah, and um, so um, on the next slide, I mean, there's a couple of components, but I'll, I'll highlight the typical customer. This um, shows what the bill would be today uh, on the bottom line and under the, the blue bar un, under the proposed. Now, a uh, typical customer is right around uh, 7,500 gallons per month. So this just gives a, you know, a range depending on bills throughout the year or different types of users, you know, just residential. And, and the, the focus is on uh, residential customers. So under the proposed, at that 7,500, uh, gallon level that would translate to thirty-three dollars uh, per month for uh, residential customers on the water side. And before they hadn't been paying anything extra up to seventy-five hundred gallons. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. And yeah. Um, so um, I'm going to switch to sewer and, and just cover <coughs> this similar uh, information for sewer. Okay. Um, next. Uh, so the, the, there, there's a couple components with sewer, certainly the, the fixed charge is highlighted here. And I just want to, you know, again, draw the residential customers or the majority of the system and that certainly non-residential customers have to use the increase by meter size. Um, the, the second component is, is picked up in terms of the change on, on the next slide where uh, how we bill and, and, and on the volume side, uh, we're, we're proposing a uh, couple changes here. Uh, under the current rates, uh, there there's a you know a, an amount per thousand gallon that's charged, but it's capped for residential customers. So you you know basically get to that 7,500 gallons, and the the bill is capped. Uh, and the, one of the reasons why is it's it's monthly water use year round. So if if somebody's in the summertime and they're using more water for you know. What, what is going outdoor, um, that's, that's in effect why the cap is there. And, and under the proposed, proposing to modify it to more of a, 
uh, calculating that volume during the winter period use or when, when you know, largely uh, the majority of waters that is being demanded is going to the sources. So this, this is where if we just look at the rates themselves as uh, what is proposed versus what is current, it's a little misleading because the, the how it's assessed and built throughout the year is also being proposed to, to be changed. And, and, and so in effect for most customers, residential and commercial, but most customers, uh, when that uh, bill gets recalculated after that winter period, uh, it's going to largely be a fixed bill, a fixed charge for sewer throughout the year, and then the next year it'll be reset based on that customer's uh, winter use or uh, what we anticipate the discharge into the sewer system is. So it's a, it, it's where I just wanted to step uh, stop for a moment in terms of some of the components uh, uh, outside of just sort of the rates themselves, because through the volume rate. Uh, jumps off the, the page a bit there for sewer. Um, in, in terms of uh, adjustments or changes, uh, the next slide. Uh, th this, this shows, you know, again, a, is a customer's volume component um, and how the, the, the sort of minimum or maximum functions today and then under what is proposed, uh, how that uh, could change. But uh, most customers, their typical customer is about 3,000 gallons. Uh, with that winter period of usage. Uh, now, you know, certainly if year-round usage is, is used, that the volume uh, component is a bit higher. Um, and for a typical customer under the proposed, it, it, it would be a bit of an increase for sewer, um, a little more than $50 um, under today with, with kind of the cap and how that average works. Uh, it, it's a uh, about 35, so it, it is a step up for sewer for a typical customer. And then on the next slide, the, the same comparison group uh, that we looked at for the one-time plant investment fees, um, this compares the monthly water and sewer bills. Um, and uh, just, you know, between the two, the, the, the highest bill within the group, again, for a typical residential customer is about uh, $100, a little more than $100. And um, the, the lowest in the group is about 45, and you can see that the uh, city it is pretty close to uh, the, the lower of the group under the current and, and under the proposed, it kind of moves up a little bit more into the middle. Now, while you know these types of comparisons and questions, you know, differ in terms of how the city, you know, is it in line or how it may compare with others, um, it, it, it's, it's always a little bit imperfect as well, so. Just wanted to to caveat that uh, that you know for a typical user, um, you know we've calculated bills, but you know, someone uses more water, less water within this group, things could shift as well. Let's see what council questions are. All right, then right now. So <clears throat> the the only question I had was when you were first shown us charts there going across the slide. You had some prices there telling you about six or seven back and the prices were different than what was on this chart here. Uh, I think they were can you go go back to kind of almost the start. Okay, right in there. Back you went too far. Right right there. Okay. So those are the rates that are right. It says proposed monthly charge, right? Twenty-four seventy-five for a three-quarter inch line, right there up down here. Yes. Okay. Now, when you is that pro the proposed change? Is that adding eight dollars and twenty-five cents to that cost, or is that the net monthly charge? This is the fixed charge, and it's proposed to add eight twenty-five to the fixed charge. So, yeah, the, the fixed charge would be just minimum, right? Yes. And then, the, then how would you add the 825 to it? Well, uh, it, that would go by the usage? No, it, it, just to clarify, today the fixed charge is $16.50 for water. Under the proposed, we're proposing the fixed charge to increase to $24.75 uh, for that size meter up through the one inch. And that translates to an increase of eight dollars and twenty five cents. So it's sixteen plus the yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I'm yeah. sorry. But I was just looking at what it says proposed change. I thought you were going to add 
the 825. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, that that was it. it it's trying it's to just a fixed right. charge, right? I apologize for yeah. It's the difference between the grade. right. Okay, I, I didn't explain that. Yeah, that's fine. No, I, I kind of thought that's what it was, but I just wanted to clarify because it's kind of deceiving when you first look at it that way because it says proposed charge. So I thought you were adding that on to the 24, which would have made it 33. You got it. Yeah. Sorry about that. Sorry. No, no problem. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying that. No questions. Um, do you have any information um, that would show the uh, utilities reserves if we continue operating without the increase versus the health of the um, reserves if we accept the changes? I don't have that number like right now and something that we can look into and follow up, but it, without the adjustment, the we're unable to fund the expenses over the near term. So it's going to, you know, we'd go into a deficit position. Drop precipitously. I mean, yeah, we'd get in, and so then it would, you know, come back to um, the some level of expenses that are identified, like this year, but in the near term. And, and certainly we can follow up with a more specific answer, but that, I mean, that that's, that's the, the direction the fund is headed with the expenses that have been identified and incorporated. Um, so at some point it would defer expenses, delay, you know, kind of push, push things out or, or change, you know, largely the capital. Okay. I, I think if I'm understanding what you're saying, the plant investment fees only come into play if somebody's building new construction and adding a water line, just with regard to water first. Um, so if someone's not doing it, that's not something they're going to have to deal with. Someone's not doing new construction. What a residential person then would be looking at, who's a typical user, is going from a current monthly charge of sixteen fifty to twenty four seventy five. If they maintain their water use at three thousand gallons or less, then they won't be paying any additional on top of that uh, twenty four seventy five. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what percentage of uh, customers use under that threshold? Do you know residential customers? Uh, I don't have the number at my fingertips, but that's something Does that we, we've Steve got. Have a rough, rough idea. We can probably get that for you. Okay. So it, it really is, well, if this passes, it will behoove us to be more careful about water usage, just generally, as people try that. Yes, that, that's one of the objectives. Okay. Right, any other questions? Do I have a motion to approve the first reading of this ordinance? So moved. Okay. Check. Call the vote. Tobago? Yes. Riego? Yes. Shu? Yes. Williamson? Yes. Ogletree? Yes. All right. uh, when will these go into effect? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> that's right. 8D, first reading of an ordinance adjusting the city's rate for sewer service and setting hearing for consideration of said ordinance at 6 p.m. on March 21st, 2023. <coughs> Who would like to introduce that? I'll introduce. Okay. And Mr. Reem, Mr. Vigil. Oh. That's you can come back and kind yeah. of give us a synopsis on sewer so we can understand that. <laughs> oh. So a lot of information. So, being cute as like just just cover again. I like um, for myself, and I think other people like to know as a residential user how this is going to impact them if this ultimately passes. Um. So, with the uh, sewer, the, there's a similar uh, component or components of a, a fixed and, and a volumetric uh, element of the bill. And um, the, the impact to a typical customer is going to be, it's going to vary throughout the year. Um, and, and I guess, you know, so if you think of, you know, the user that uses more in the summer and less in the wintertime. So today their sewer bill goes like this. You know, depending on, you know, depending where their residential usage is, um, it, you're, we're billing more in the summer. Under the proposed change, it's going to be a higher uh, 
bill for the typical customer, but it's going to be more even throughout the year because of it being based on just sort of that winter period water use instead of monthly water use um, as a basis for sewer volume billings. Um, and this is another uh, one where the majority of the customers, when we look at sort of that indoor water use that residential, it's in that zero to 5,000 gallons a month um, with, uh, again, the average of the typical right around that 3,000 gallon per, per, for indoor water use. So for you know, a customer using 3,000 gallons, it, it would translate, as, as proposed, uh, about $20 a month increase uh, for the sewer component of the bill. Okay. So one of your slides had a uh, residential monthly water and sewer bill survey, and it says that uh, currently someone paying 35 would then be paying 57 Is that the $20 increase? That you're yes. Doing? Okay. Any questions? Any other questions? Comments? No questions. All right. Thank you. Can I have a motion to approve the first reading of the, an ordinance adjusting the city's records for some recent sign of hearing and consideration for said ordinance on six, at 6 p.m. on March 21st, 2023? Can we get a motion? So moved. Second. Second. What are you waiting for? Call the vote. Devona? Yeah. Griego? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Williamson? Yes. All of you. Yes. When uh, will these be effective, uh, the new rates? Um, Member of Town Council, uh, 1st of April, basically, so 10 days after the March 21st hearing date. Thank you. Item 8 E, First Amendment to Animal Shelter Service Contract and Lease Agreement with Noah's Ark. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I can certainly present this one. So, uh, Mayor and Council, uh, Nozark had come to you with a request for additional funding to support their efforts. And so we're bringing that request forth tonight um, to see if you all want to vote to formalize that. So um, we're contemplating $25,000 uh, in the fourth quarter marijuana uh, request, which is further down on the agenda. Um, and then three more increments of $25,000 in our quarterly request this year for a total of $100,000. In order to do that, we need to amend their contract with the city. So we're bringing the contract amendment first before we get to the uh, fourth quarter marijuana report. So that's where we're at, and happy to answer any questions you may have on that. Councilman, no questions. No questions. Um, I, I would like it just as a, a point of a public record to um, note that it is. Uh, we are obligated to have these services in some form or another. So if you were less wouldn't mind speaking just a little bit to that, I think that's an important thing to know. Sure. We have public record. And I would be happy to do that, Councilman Williamson. And, and you know, pursuant to a, an inquiry you had earlier of, of me, uh, providing these kinds of services are uh, one of the fundamental services that municipalities do, uh, do serve and provide the it is under the uh, police powers of the um, Colorado statutory scheme for um, incorporating municipalities and again one of the essential services that we are supposed to provide. So it, you're absolutely correct. It is necessary and uh, certainly appropriate for the city to, to do this and to have Noah's Ark as the provider of this service. Thank you. Any other questions? I don't have any questions. Can I get a motion to approve the First Amendment to Animal Shelter Service? So, okay. and lease agreement, sorry. And a second? Second. And if I could please, sure. uh, don't interrupt, but uh, Madam Mayor Pro Tem, I just want to say that Councilwoman Griego is recusing herself from this vote for the discussion. But for the record, I know you're about to take the vote, and I just wanted that to be clear. Thank you. Call the vote. Dibano? Yes. Griego? Abstain. Shu? Yes. Williamson? Yes. Ogletree? Yes. Item 8F, 
Resolution authorizing expenditure of marijuana revenue received by the city of Trinidad, fourth quarter 2022. Ms. Navarro? Who's presenting that? Uh, Ms. Navarro. Okay. <laughs> it's hiding back there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As discussed at the council work session last week, fourth quarter marijuana's uh, sales tax yielded $509,768. Of that, 359,768 is available for allocation. Um, you have in your packets the resolution that allocates uh, $233,849 to city projects, which is a 65% share, and then $107,930 to the marijuana reserves. $14,391 to the incentives, the 4% share. And then finally, the outside agencies funding that goes to Trinidad Community Foundation, $3,598. We talked through all of these at the work session, mm -hmm. but I wondered if anybody had any follow-up questions or concerns. Not since we're right. I don't have any either. Um, can I have a motion to? It's too easy, Cheryl. Stay. <laughs> 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 no, just kidding. Can I have a motion to approve the resolution authorizing expenditure of marijuana revenue received by the City of Trinidad, fourth quarter, twenty twenty-two? So Second. Second. Call the vote. Tiana. <coughs> yes. Grego. Yes. Shu. Yes. Williamson. Yes. Ogletree. Yes. Item eight G. First reading of an ordinance vacating a certain alley be between lots 1 to 8 inclusive to the west and lots 19 to 26 inclusive to the east in block 6 and all the alley in block 1 all in Fairview addition to the city of Trinidad, Los Angeles County, Colorado and setting hearing for consideration of said ordinance at 6 p.m. on March 21st, 2023. Can I have someone inter introduce? I'll introduce. Thank you. Um, Ms. Garrett, are you going to present that? Good evening. The alleyways that um, are, or the alleyway that's being referenced in this ordinance um, is essentially in the same area where the Frontier Hotel is, motel is. Um, back in 1958, the then city council vacated that alleyway and it has since been built upon. And so it's the ordinance wasn't recorded, so it's not being properly reflected in the records. And so the uh, holder of the property and title company are asking that the city now vacate the alley and um, correct the property issue. Questions? I'm just amazed there's a Milwaukee Street. <laughs> I didn't know there was a Milwaukee Street. There's not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any questions? No questions. Thank you. Can I have a motion to approve the first reading of the source? So moved. Second? Second. Call the vote. Tabano? Yes. Priega? Yes. Shu? Yes. Williamson? Yes. All of you? Yes. I have nine council reports. Well, Los Angeles County Veterans Council, Bill Phillips, uh, wanted me to tell everybody that the Fort Wooten has, they've removed all of the office spaces there where the uh, former Social Security office is occupied for the last, I don't know how many decades. It's an open space just like it was in 1937. And um, it can house over 700 people now. So, mm -hmm. good. And that's about it. Well, I have nothing. Obviously. Thank you. Well, I'm going to stand on this soapbox for just a minute. Uh oh. So please, please be patient yeah. with me. Um, I just wanted to thank council and staff for believing in Noah's Ark and our board and uh, the staff that works out there. there. There's three ladies that are in the audience 
that I work with very diligently to keep that shelter operating. We do it at no at a great expense of our personal time and a lot of financial support as well. And it was said several meetings ago that I had a conflict of interest and when I looked up the definition, it means that I'm gaining some personal financial gain from being on the board of Noah's Ark, which is totally false. There's no such thing. But I encourage people to please come out and look for yourself. The shelter is very well run. It's very clean. We have a staff that dedicates itself to maintaining that facility for everybody, for our four-legged citizens as well as our two-legged citizens. And don't believe what you read. Come and look for yourself, please, please. We're working very hard. And to you ladies sitting in the audience, thank you so much. I mean, this means the world to me to have that shelter continue. And I want to thank you for the dedication that all of you have put into this. Thank you very much. Uh, I have no opinion. I, um, I have to agree with you. I was privileged to take a tour and with the staff, and I've always considered those our a jewel and our crown. And compared to other communities, we really work hard to take care of our animals, and it's something we should be proud of. Um, Thank you. I, uh, tomorrow I'm going to a Colorado Oil and Gas Conservation Commission meeting. It's just a local government meet and greet. Um, they're in town to sort of uh, do a field trip and see all of the gas and oil producers down here. And then on Friday, I'm going to be at uh, Advisory Council for Common Creative Industries in Denver. But other than that, that's all I have going on. Reports by City Manager and City Attorney. Um, thank you, Mayor, for time, Council. Just one item today. I just wanted to uh, give Council an update. You may have heard, but maybe not. Um, last night, we had a couple of residents who were camping and uh, under Los Animas Street Bridge, or Animas Street Bridge, sorry. Um, and they started a fire. It burned through uh, our water pipe that goes uh, under the bridge. So our, our crews were quick to uh, address it. We're out there all morning, most of the day, uh, fixing that section of pipe. And I believe Mark is Mark, it's back running at this point. Um, it did shut off, unfortunately, water to Taco Bell. So they were without water today and uh, couldn't do business. So we're at, we're looking into ways we can prevent that going forward, but I just wanted to let the council know that that did happen last night. Thank you. Mayor, Mayor Corten, thank you. Um, I just want to let you know that we are going to be having a training for members of boards and commissions on March 24th at 10 o'clock. Is that right? Is that the right time? That's okay, good. Thank you. And um, otherwise, I, I have nothing else, but well done, Bill. Yes. Thanks. Well done. Great very, 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 Thank you for being patient. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> very well done. Why did I do this? Um, <laughs> so we've reached adjournment. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So Second. And call the vote. Devona? Yes. Creator? Yes. Shu? Yes. Williamson? Yes. Oh, well, Shu. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Julie. Julie. I got to talk to you real quick.